Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We are on episode five. Uh, we are here talking about the spoiler episode. This one is the truth. This one was the longest in the series. It ran 58 minutes, 22 seconds, and we also had mid credits. So yay for that. I am joined by Mr. Chris Seeley. How are you doing, sir? Oh, great. Thanks for asking. I'm, I'm doing well. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I can't wait to talk about the episode. And I am also joined by Mr. Tony Palonco. Hello, how Dana. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. And we will later be joined by Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. whenever he is able to join and be free. Um, so let's just dive right into this. This episode was called The Truth, and I thought that was a pretty great revealing name. That or uh, Civil War 2.0, because scene for scene, kind of shot for shot, this was Civil War. So it caught us, there were kind of like four different things that happened all at once you know this is the second to the last episode so they have to tie up any loose ends as possible while also setting up for the big final battle so we followed um john walker right after he killed the one of the flag smashers who admired him since he was a little well, not him but captain america seems little he killed him and now we're trying to find his journey of him you know understanding what he did coming to terms with what he did and you know the government in a way kind of turning his back their back against him and him stepping into his new truth and we also for this had to deal with uh sam wilson as falcon you know trying to decide whether or not he is going to take up the captain america shield once again you know he's reintroduced to isaiah bradley that goes down and he has to come to that decision and follow his version of the truth and then we also have bucky kind of again you know coming to terms well, what happened in his past as Winter Soldier and him deciding to, you know, be the Bucky that he's meant to be. And in order to do that, he has to kind of follow his own path to redemption and and see that through. And then we have the Carly Morgison character who is head of the Flag Smashers, who is at that point where it's time to get even uglier. And she makes some calls that we kind of find out who Power Broker is. And that's my theory. Um, and, and we see that she is kind of submitted in her truth and going forward what she's determined to do. So overall, guys, what did you think of this episode? Who goes first? Um, Tony. Tony. Yeah. Um, you know, it was one of those kind of setup episodes because it is like the second mm -hmm. to last one. So mm -hmm. I, I guess that's why it was just a, like, I'm just going to get out front. I this was my mm -hmm. opinion but the weakest episode not not a lot happened um like you had the beginning which was explosive i was surprised by that because i thought it would take place like maybe a week or two or a couple of days after you know captain america had killed the dude but no it was literally right afterwards then we got into this big extended fight that was like 10 minutes long i fucking loved it it was fantastic you know that was good and then after that it just went into like uh oh, we're just gonna coast for the rest of the episode kind of mode. Mm -hmm. some good stuff happened here and there um the the stuff with isaiah was really good uh we saw more of john walker like you said you know like you get to see more of his mentality where he's like listen you guys built me into this thing and now you're rejecting me what the fuck you know um then we had the whole stuff with, with sam trying to be you know accept his role that was really good too the whole train i'm a sucker for training montages so i was all <laughs> over that you know that was really good but we'll get into it but the boat stuff you know i understand what they were trying to do but it just didn't work for me and and it, it did it just brought up something I fear. I'm like, I hope this boat, because they had this boat stuff in the episode. Where I'm like, I hope this doesn't become like a main thing because this is boring, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So that didn't work too well for me. And then we had that little post credit scene. You're like, uh oh, here we go. Um, and then the, I mean, we'll get into it, but like, there was just that, that part just cracked me up because like they were, you know, the homegirl, right? Um, Carly, she was at a park, right? And I'm there like, yo, did they fucking lose the budget here? That's clearly Midtown Manhattan. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. That's the park we went to when we yeah. had to, enough time. It was right next to the, um, what was it, Arby's. Yeah, and yeah. And we was trying to go in to play that video game. Yeah, that's Washington, that's Washington Park, right? Washington, not Washington Park, but Washington, was, I think it was like, the one right by the gridiron area. building. But, we, know, yeah. yeah, it was, it was right next to good. that restaurant. Oh, uh, right. uh, it's it's park. Man. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm there like, hold on, man. Like, because I thought they lost the budget on this show. I'm like, yo, you had to go to New York to film. Turns out it is actually supposed to be New York. It, well, you know? from the first scene, we saw when Bucky was in New York. Remember, that was kind of like a, the 
the Chinatown yeah. area when he yeah. was eating at the restaurant. Yeah, but that was just my focus. I was just under the assumption. I'm like, you guys are trying to show this is like a foreign country. I'm like, that's fucking downtown <laughs> you know <laughs> but it was downtown obviously uh but yeah overall it was a, it wasn't a bad episode obviously you know it still had plenty of action in there it was just after the last two episodes you were expecting shit on that level it wasn't that but it was necessary obviously because you know we got to set things up for the explosive finale you know but overall <laughs> i give it, it was a good episode what about you chris um i thought it was good i thought it started off strong it, it got a little weak um uh like the buddy the buddy cop thing needs to happen earlier like i think the story was structured oddly because that kind of scene with um him and bucky working on the boat and the community coming together that should have been earlier in the show right we're supposed to be at the crescendo of everything we're almost at the end right we're at the end we see a lot, a lot of stuff happens this episode we, we, we see an interesting conversation between uh, Sharon Carter and what can, I can only assume she called Batroc the Leaper, who yeah. appeared in episode yeah, that's one, that to ar- arrange um, that that uh, weapon stuff. So, I mean, that goes back to my theory. I discussed this last time that I think she's a power broker. Oh, yeah. And that seems to be coming more and more to be true. Uh, but um, with that stuff, I know you needed levity, and I think there's two mistakes that have been made one there's not enough episodes of this to uh to tell this story properly so mm-hmm. things are cut together oddly things are rushed some things are glossed over or explain the conversation i think john walker and um and Ballstar, what what's the character's name uh lamar hopkins oh, lamar hopkins their relationship needed to be shown their their tours of duty their time in in even in high school, I don't care if you have to jump back to his football days and show them together. Maybe they maybe they joined ROTC together, they served yeah. together, they fought together. Like all that needed to be shown, not just uh glossed over. And then we get to the scene where John Walker goes to visit his parents, and then we see all these photos. I mean I'm like, man, but this needed to be shown up before he murdered that guy for Lamar, you know, like that stuff. We need to feel sympathetic before that. We need to understand how important their relationship is before you go cutting some guy's head off with the shield, right? So these odd decisions that were made, like they didn't give this show enough episodes to breathe. I think it should have started with the, the, it did kind of start with the boat, but it should have started out with Bucky and him having a, a, a better relationship. And then what sours it is him giving away the shield. I think him just giving away the shield from the, the jump without Bucky's involvement and Bucky's just seeing a psychiatrist out of the blue and doing his own thing in Chinatown. I thought that was kind of dumb. I thought they should have had their relationship from the beginning. And then the reason they split off is because he gave up the shield and that would piss him mm. off. Like, I'm like, you missed an opportunity here to, to have a, a better story. And it should circle back to the boat at the end. Right, that should bring them back together. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, and I thought there were some very iconic shots. One thing they frame shots very well in this show. Yes. The fight in the mm-hmm. beginning that, that Tony mentioned. I'm pretty sure John Walker kneeling over the shield and crying is a Captain America cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just don't remember which uh, issue, but that's definitely an iconic shot. Uh, the fact that uh, so John Walker is full on super soldier because he rips Falcon's wings right off with his bare <laughs> hands. That was crazy. And then uh, Falcon then turns around and uses his thrusters to break his arm to try to get the shield away from him. Uh, that, you know, that's, that's also he also shorted out uh, Bucky's arm. Yeah. John Walker hit him so hard with the shield, he, he flew off and then he landed in a way that his arm was short circuiting. I thought they would do a little more with that, but it just seems like he fixed it and it, you know, never comes up again. But he, yeah, he overall, that fight was great. He got the code from AO. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just the piggybacking off of what you said, like the shots in general, you, there were scenes that were frame by frame of Civil War. Um, I really kind of liked how they did the opening. Just with this, it was gorgeous, yes. I thought. Then you would see like the blood on the shield, you know, that's symbolic for everything and literal. And then you would have this moment here where he's, uh, no, like you can't see it because it's banners in the way. But he would have like this moment right here with him, you know, declaring I am Captain America. So you could see that kind of breakdown that he has during the fight. 
and him solidifying, you know, what he is. And, you know, it goes back to what, what was it, like Lamar Hopkins said, in the sense that it just amplifies who you already are. Yeah. It doesn't change you. So you have that there. And then this one, to me, felt like a direct um, cover from, remember, in Civil War, when we would have Tony Stark on one side and Captain America on the other side. So... They they did a pretty good job with that. Um, I know we didn't get do Duke was able to talk about the fight scene and what you loved. Was there anything? Tony? I mean, no. I mean, I mean, it was good. I, again, it was a cool two on one fight, but it was a little, I guess, not even because you had two super soldiers and then one regular dude jumping in there mm-hmm. every once in a while. That's basically what it was, you know. But Sam, you know, he's good. He was able to hold his own. But you know, it was a really good fight. Very brutal. I like that, you know. But but it was kind of funny because like the whole point of the fight was to get the shield, but Bucky literally had the shield for like a minute. So I'm like, you already got the shield. Just book. You, you just leave right now. You got the shield, bro. You know, you, cause he caught it. Right. It's like, yo, you just leave, you know? And then like, they had that big dramatic moment where he broke his arm. Uh, Falcon broke uh, Walker's arm to get the shield, but it's like, but, but Bucky had it like two minutes ago, man. Like, you know, so, so that was a little weird, but no, overall it was good. You know? I um, mean, I did like that scene where he's like, I am Captain America. I'm, I'm thinking like, bro, no, you're not, man fuck out of here no, he's crazy. <laughs> you know um, he, he, but it was good i liked it um yes yeah, so that that was a really i thought that was a really great opener and you, like you guys also said i thought that, that would be the energy for the entire episode but i guess they had to balance it out with more story so um also kind of to follow with along with john walker story situation he has now been stripped of yes. all of his medals he's stripped of his rank and this is all immediately this is not like, you know, any type of retroactive. This is, you know, it is retroactive, but immediately that day, he's stripped of everything that he has worked for. You know, he's trying to tell his side of the story, which kind of harkens back to the conversation he had with uh, Sam. It was like, oh, maybe if you just sit down and explain. And he was like, okay, well, let me try to explain. And that just did not work for him. And he is stripped from, you know, all of his titles. He's all of his because awards, his petitions, whatever it is that he has. He also doesn't have any pension, so no money afterwards they just kick him out on the street which you can kind of in a way compare it a little bit although you could say isaiah bradley had it way worse but you know once the government is done with you they're done in that sense um so we have that and then we have this scene with him and his girlfriend and then all of a sudden we come up with uh louis dreyfus character who is from seinfeld known from seinfeld and she is basically madame hydra she is a part of agents of shield she was supposed to have been in the first, what was it, the Black Widow movie. So yeah. for us, it was like, oh my God, but you know, if we had gotten everything in order that was originally planned, we'd just been like, oh, that's cool. Um, but she basically offers her services to John and saying, you know, when I call, you better pick up the phone. Hmm. And she knows everything that seems to happen the entire journey. She knows about Lamar, she knows about that he took the serum, he knows everything that the shield is even missing, and she doesn't really care. She just wants him because, you know, him and that serum is very important to their mission of Hydra. Um, Any thoughts from you, Tony? Yeah, uh, that was good. Um, So just to so I'm clear here. Mm -hmm. So she is going to be in the Black Widow movie then, right? She is in the Black Widow movie. Gotcha. Because remember, the original order was supposed to be Black Widow, WandaVision, then Falcon and Winter Soldier. So she is already an established character in the MCU. So she probably will be continued past okay, gotcha. Black Widow. Yeah, I'm um, sorry about that. But yeah, it was like, yo, this is this is cool. Like you, you said, I was just a little confused because she said her name was Val. So I'm like, this is Valley Cooper. She doesn't look anything like Valley Cooper in the comics, but she has a dyed hair like Madame Hydra. I'm like, what's going on here? But well, it was, it was Countess, uh, what is it? Countess, yeah, Countess Valentina Contessa, Allegra yeah, this, de yeah. Fontaine. Yeah, all the oh yeah, like big fucking name. Um, but I like the fact that like like you said, she's in the know. She knows what's going on. Trying to set him up, and she's even like, yeah, that shield, eh, it doesn't actually belong to the government. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh shit, you know. So what's going on there? So that's gonna be really cool seeing all that play out. Um, but I like the very short scene, but her character presence was very well known. It was just a little weird at first because it's a lane, you know. I have to I have to get over that, you know. So I, <laughs> you know, but she was good. You know, yeah, that's the original version of her right there. But yeah, yeah, you know, it was it was good to see Madame Hydra. Again, I, I'm loving how this show is itself just setting up all these other 
facets of the Marvel universe. Not just, you know, because you know, introducing Marvel Universe from the comics into the MCU. Like we had Mad Rapport in there. We we got John Walker in there now, you know. So now we got Madam Hydra, even though Met she was supposed to be in the in the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. but still it, it's good to see the show tapping into all these resources, you know. So yeah, it was good. It was a good scene. The um the shield referencing is <clears throat> is from the older movies, right? So Howard Stark made the shield originally. Remember Tony Stark guilts um Captain America after he beats him up and yeah. at the end and he said that shield doesn't belong to you. My father made that shield and he yeah. drops it. So but then where did Howard Stark get it? He got the vibranium from Wakanda. So is it technically theirs? Is it technically Stark's? The government kind of usurped it for the for war efforts. So it's like that's the gray area. You have this triangle of ownership. Yeah. The metal came from Wakanda, Stark actually forged it, but the US government kind of usurped it for Captain America. So it's, that's that's the gray area. It's very mm-hmm. interesting. And also really quickly in the comics, uh, she is a shield spy and she's also Nick Fury's lover. Yes. But she ends up being, she's actually a Russian mole who ends up taking the mantle of Ma- Madame Hydra. So she's head of all of the evil things that's going on. And, and clearly she, whatever happens in Black Widow, she clearly survives. Yeah, right. <laughs> um clearly so um just jumping around a little bit um we kind of then have uh from after that whole scene with the whole girlfriend and him i love her just presence overall by the way um we then have that um we follow sorry we end up following carly who kind of returns back to her hometown remember uh the mama danya was there and the other kids that you yeah. know very vibrant area and is gone the government the grc is basically just taking down the flag smashers what they ended up doing was raiding all of their spots and that the higher government is now in charge and like they're just trying to find them out trying to find their their wherever they are so they're all basically you could say they are arrested they're considered terrorists or was it harboring foreign terrorists so they're all, you know, probably imprisoned at this moment. And this is when Carly becomes more emboldened. And she realizes that, you know, we have to go even harder than what we've been doing before. And we have to just, you know, take down everyone. And that's when she makes that mysterious call. Uh, I believe she, no, no, am I skipping Sharon? I think I might uh, be yeah. So yes, yeah, so basically she ends up, she, she called, reaches out and we end up seeing that Sharon makes a call to uh who was it bat rock bad rock yep. who is the french the bad guy yeah. bat rock who in the comics this is basically what he is <laughs> and you know he does not like falcon because in the show basically sam you know ended a deal that he was supposed to have ruined everything and he lost his small fortune so how do you guys feel with this new character being introduced and also knowing that Sharon is, we already knew, but she is the power broker. Yeah, Chris, you go first. Oh, I mean, that that wasn't surprising. I was just waiting for that shoe to drop. And mm-hmm. uh, it, I, it's kind of nice that the callback comes in. Like he, you know, uh, Falcon kicks his ass in episode one. He almost dies in that helicopter. And then, you know, she calls him up and he, he basically tells the Flag Smashers, like, I'm just here to kill the Falcon. Like, that's all he wants is revenge. I almost thought, like, while I was watching the episode, I'm like, is he going to show up and sink this boat that they just worked so hard on? Like, yeah, yeah. I hope he doesn't sink the boat. You know, but uh, he didn't. He was in New York. So that, that they're, they're going to throw down. That's going to be interesting. They're going to they're gonna have to fight. That, that's going to be the unresolved thing. Everybody's mm-hmm. going to come together. I'm wondering almost if, if Zemo's going to still show up, even though they the, – the, the um, uh, yeah, the, the Wakanda Royal God took him to the raft. He was like, oh, we're going to take him to the raft. I'm like, well, we don't see you take him to the raft, so I always question it. You don't see the body, so That's, I wonder if he'll come back at the end or something. Or if he's just done, done. Like, he gave his last piece of advice, and that's the end know. of his story. See, the thing about the the, the Dorje, Dor- Dor- the, the, that group, yeah, is Dormelage... That group basically is, I don't think they really care. They just came to get, you know, Zemo because that was a part of what happened to them. I don't think they really care about what's going on in America or any place else. Oh, oh no, no, they're not going to show. I mean, Zemo. Yeah. Zemo I don't, but see, I don't see Zemo being able to escape Wakanda, do you? 
Because I don't think so. Oh, no, the raft is not Wakanda. The raft is uh, an American facility. It's in the ocean. They showed it in um, oh, yeah. Civil War. And obviously, know. not the most secure place since Steve Rogers broke in there by himself and got everyone out. That's uh, true. At the end of the movie. It did, yeah. That is true. So, moving also around, we like we had that scene with Zemo. Oh, right, real quick, I just got to say this. I feel real dumb right now. Because I saw Batroc in the first episode, right? Saw him mm -hmm. again in this one. And the whole time I'm looking at this dude, I'm like, I know this motherfucker. Where do I? Like, it was bothering the fuck. I'm looking at his, like, cauliflower. He's like, I know this dude. It's fucking jo George St. Pierre, man. <laughs> it's like, it's GSP. The whole time he's been, GSP's been staring in my face. I had no idea. Even though I knew it was him. I was like, hold on. I know this dude. You know, so <laughs> shout out to GSP. And it's perfect because he's French. Batroc's French, you know? Perfect. So that was good. It's good to have you know they're gonna throw it down again, you know. Oh yeah, and plus they you know they, they kind of film the scene where they're yeah, yeah. that's just yeah. I mean, yeah, it looks it looks it looks good, you know. Um I'm glad he doesn't have the stupid Wolverine mask, you know, or the, or He the, looks silly. Yeah, oh, oh, oh you know, Mr. the French man, now you see Captain America stupid, you know. <laughs> Anyway, go on. I'm sorry, I just had to throw so, it in. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, speaking really quickly about the whole rap thing with the whole uh, the Dorje that group coming in and arresting him, you know, right before he kind of went away, um, he kind of was like Zemo, kind of, it was like a weird therapy session he had with Bucky where he kind of, you know, says, I forgive you for everything that you've done. I've crossed, you know, your name off my list. It's okay. And it was that moment where Bucky, you thought for a moment he could have shot him. And he was like, it's okay, you can shoot me, it's all right. But he didn't instead. So that was a nice little moment that they have. So then we have this really huge scene, and this is the one with Falcon goes and visits Isaiah Bradley again. Um, and it, it, he want, to me, it kind of came off as he wanted to give him the shield. And Isaiah was like, oh, heck no, get it away from me. I don't even want to look at it. And he goes through, you know, the, again, the trauma that he had after you know, serving his country. And he talks about, um, you know, he working for the government and everything was okay. But then it talked about, you know, the Red Tails, the 332. These are all black uh, servicemen and how they would go off to war to fight for their country and come back to a country that doesn't want them and that whole racist thing. But then they talk about very specifically what happened to him and that he went, and it was him and multiple people were given different versions of the serum and how they were told it was a tetanus shot. You know, we've heard that before with the whole uh, other experiments, that, the Tuskegee experiment. And so, you know, not everyone survived, and those who did survive, you know, they off, went off to war, but some were captured. They were prisoners of war, and the government wanted to basically erase them. And he didn't feel that that was correct. So he went, broke out of his facility, and captured everyone, he rescued them, took them back home to the government and you know the government was very upset and essentially he was basically saying that, that they killed them all and that he was one of the last survivors and they held him captive for 30 years experimenting more and more on him trying to find out why did he survive that it was a nurse that took pity upon him and you know he was writing to the woman who was supposed to be his wife his love his heart and she never received the mails. They kind of just, you know, they kept everything and just left him there isolated and alone. The nurse took much pity upon him, faked the paperwork to pretend that he was dead. And he gave him the box back and he was off to be you know, Isaiah Bradley, someone else. Um, so this was like a, a moment where he was saying to Sam, you would be a fool if you would try to you know, stand up for your country that doesn't want you. Um, so we have here, you know, this is them, you know, basically meeting and him saying, you know, this is everyone wants the great white hope version of a Captain America and that no one really wants this, this black one, you know, and that this is a white man's shield. This is a white man. He's the white savior. And for you to, to do that, you know, America will never let black, a black man be Captain America. And that was the conversation that he had. And he was saying to him that if you allow yourself to be the next Captain America, you know, you have no self-respect. Listen to my story and, and what's going on. So what did you guys think about that, uh, Chris? Um, I mean, the conversation had, it's a little, I had a, I had a problem with the, the nurse letting him escape story because I would think someone so 
essential to the super soldier research in the weapons plus program for a nurse to fake your death with just uh, some paperwork is ridiculous but you know whatever the story had to happen so they kind of glossed over that um I'll, i think it, it, his story was a little heavy like i understand the what he's been through and it has to contrast but i feel that uh, falcon should have pushed back on him a little bit like saying hey you had this experience and uh, yes it was awful and whatever but he did not interject with hey i've been in multiple movies i fought for the earth and i have never had these experiences i fought with with the white man who had this shield and i fought with a white russian spy and i fought and and i fought with an asgardian and you know what they never treated me like hey there's the black guy on the team he was just the falcon and he was useful so i feel like he didn't speak up in this conversation to push back at him at all and say, hey, I understand you had an awful experience and you're bitter and, and I get that. What they did to you is awful and I feel bad for you. But he never pushed back once. It was it was only later that his sister's like, hey, that was his experience. Your experience is different. You have to decide who you are. And it's like, no, it's, he should have had that idea already. It shouldn't have been up to her to be like, hey, idiot, you have your own life and you did all this shit and you're a soldier and you. I was very proud of you. But you need to decide. He doesn't decide who you are. You decide who you are. And I'm like, okay, but so it, so it was a little heavy handed. Um, I thought that that scene could have, uh, while it had emotional impact, it was a, it was a little padded out. And um, I didn't get the, also the point of him bringing the shield to him if he wasn't planning to give it to him. Like he he brought it there and and he, all he's like I don't want to want this white man's shield. I was like okay, <laughs> it's like moving on. Like he has to haul it back to Louisiana. Uh, yeah, so I, I I feel like the message came across, but it was a little muddied with um, the heavy handedness. Only to turn around later on the boat scene for his sister to tell him, "Hey, you 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 have your own experience, and he had his, and you have yours, and you have to decide who you are. He doesn't decide who you are." Which, yes, that's important, but we get, we get that, and that should have been in that one conversation, so we could have had more uh, content going forward. So there there was too much heavy messaging going on. I felt also there was heavy messaging in the in the training scene later with the shield when Bucky and him were throwing mm -hmm. the shield around. Uh, I felt like, all right, this message is getting a little too heavy now. Like, we need to we need to move back now. If things slow down to a crawl, you need to move back to stuff happening. So that's how I felt about it. Yeah, um, I got I got to be a little careful here, right? Um, like I, I agree with, with what Chris said. Um, but the thing, yeah, because it's right. It's like okay, so you understand where Isaiah is coming from, right? Like, no, you can't take that away from him. Like that bitterness colors everything that he sees right but at the same time it's like bro there's been progress right we had a black president you know things are like not better but i mean they're better but they're not they could still be better you know what i'm saying but they're not like shit and in the context of the mcu it's like fuck it falcon saved the earth bro and no one none of his teammates in question like oh it's just a black guy whatever no one said that shit so he was Again, not diminishing his experience, but he was clearly wrong. Like, no, dude, that's the old days. This is the new age. You know, shit is different now. And especially since half the earth was wiped out and came back, it's like, you know, that type of shit is not as prevalent. Obviously, it still exists. You remember that fucking jerk bank loaner or whatever? That type of stuff still exists, but it's not as prevalent as isaiah believes so yeah i agree chris i wanted him i was like sam let him have it bro make this guy like i didn't want to make him feel super I was like let him have it bro show him show him he's wrong and he didn't do it it took his sister to tell him it's like so that was a little unsatisfying like i wanted him to be like like no motherfucker like a black man can't be captain america and i'm gonna show you you know because we all know how this show is gonna end it's gonna be sam with that fucking shield you know, proving Isaiah wrong. Yeah, and it's yeah. going to be very interesting seeing Isaiah's uh, response to that. Obviously, there will be those racist assholes who won't accept Captain America, but the large majority of um, America, they'll be like, yeah, that's fucking Sam Wilson. Let's go. They're going to they're gonna totally side with him. So um, Isaiah was, again, his experiences make him think that way, and you have to understand that, to be sympathetic to that, but he's fucking wrong. 
you know? So I really wanted Sam to just push back on that. Hopefully we'll get that in the next episode. Sam's like, no, I'm Captain America now. Yeah, you know, that shit that is not like that no more, bro. That would have made the, the shield training at the end more satisfying. Yeah. Like, he only did that after his sister told him that. And he's like, yes, I'm going to trade with the shield. Yeah. And he starts bouncing around trees and stuff. It's like, no, man, stop. You should have been doing push ups from the, the jump, you know, getting ready. <laughs> yeah. Because the thing is, like, even though um, Sam hasn't accepted it yet, like, bro, you've been Captain America, bro. <laughs> it's like you've been Captain America. You just get need to just accept it. But yeah, it would have been more satisfying if he has let I say it no. It's like, no, you're fucking wrong, man. That shit that they did to you is fucked up. And I'm gonna see to it that you're recognized. But this is 2021, not 1950, and shit is different now, you know. And also, wouldn't it have been more motivating for him to push back and say that and maybe make Isaiah think about, hey, I'm living in the past, I'm not living now. Yeah, exactly. And then it's setting up that hey, the Patriot could come back. Potentially. Yeah. Like, wouldn't That's that right. be something? Yeah, no, you're right about that. Uh, but again, you know, I am at least glad his sister told him that, you know? But it's like, bro, you should have you should have done that on your own, man. Because it was so obvious. I'm like, bro, this is this dude's talking from the past, man. You're this is now, you know. But yeah, it was a good scene, though. Don't get me wrong, you know, framed well and everything, emotional impact and all that shit, but it was just undercut by the fact that Sam could have been more proactive about it. Especially it's like you should know better, bro. especially given your experiences. Okay, so um, okay, well, we, just to backtrack a little bit, um, we did got another uh, scene with uh, uh, the the boy, um, not Isaiah. What is his name? I forgot his name. But basically, uh, we yeah, we, young Captain America, whatever the fuck they call him, <laughs> the Patriot. That's his name. Right? He's yeah. Patriot. Yeah, okay, yeah, Patriot. Yeah. He's Patriot. So um, Elijah. Basically, we we get another scene with Elijah. What we do know is this: he does end up joining the Young Avengers. Yes. So. We do know that he is basically caring for his grandfather, and I feel that he will do anything possible to protect him. I also feel that it might be a small chance. With we know that Sam takes up the mantle with the whole the the, the being the next Captain America by seeing that it could be a possibility. Well, that's how you know Elijah ends up joining the the Young Avengers by giving by getting the okay from Isaiah. Possibly. Um, I just can't see him, you know, escaping out of his home and be like, no, nah, screw you, Grandpa. I'm going to do it anyway. For me, I just kind of feel that that will eventually, you have to see and show people things in order for them to understand. So, you know, as you guys were saying, there are parts of which I agree, you know, that the whole cap, he's going to show um, Isaiah that, yes, you can be a black Captain America a bl and, and everything will be okay. Um, so, and that's how we end up getting the Young Avengers. Another weird theory, it might be a stretch, that he ends up training the, the Young Avengers. Maybe. Maybe. Eventually. We'll, we'll, see how, we'll see how far down they go, but that would be really cool. Um, I do want to add one quick thing. It's like, yeah, you can be a Black Captain America, but things won't be 100% okay, because there's still those racist fucking assholes who just won't accept it, you know? But people will generally accept it more than they would have. In the 1950s, Isaiah could not have been Captain America. People would be like, fuck that. No, 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 no. They would not accept it. Uh, modern age, they would accept it, but there'll still be those assholes down south. I'm like, nah, that ain't my Captain America, boy. You know, like, they'll still have those motherfuckers to deal with. But generally speaking, you know, but the thing is, you know, and as the comics kind of show this, being a black Captain America does come with its own set of problems, you know, unique problems, which will be interesting to explore. I just like, like Chris, I just hope, hope they don't go too heavy handed because that remember, you're still trying to tell a fun superhero story. <laughs> you know, you don't want to get too crazy with the political stuff. Throw it in there, obviously have some flavor, but don't go ham, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but overall it was good. We'll, and we'll see about young Avengers if they're going to go down that road or not. Right. Well, no, they are, they are because you're setting it up. You're sprinkling yeah. You know, we got all these young kids and we, we all know what they become. So kind of moving on, we go on to that scene you guys really can't stand, which is basically the boat scene, hmm. little flirtation going on. But then what was really more important after, you know, Sharon called the Bat Rock to go work with Carly, we end up following more with uh, John Walker's story. He ends up speaking to their parents and explaining, you know, what exactly happened to them. They're very, you know, we love you, um, thank you that type of thing. He's saying, I'll always be there, you know, if you need anything. The sister, or Lamar's sister is like, nah. She doesn't seem like she's with it at all. She gives that kind of stink eye, like, I don't trust you. Something's not right. Uh, 
So we have that scene and we, we kind of get the photograph. Again, going back on what you guys were saying, I do wish that we were able to actually see them together because honestly, I don't feel anything. Like, I'm yeah. sorry Laura is dead, but okay. Yeah, That's we, need, we needed flashbacks to their tours of duty. We needed to see how important their their mm -hmm. relationship was. And, and we don't see that. They just tell us. Right. See, I thought that's how they was going to open up the scene. Because remember when he's running, when it opens up with John Walker running and it has like the voices of the flashbacks of, of Lamar kind of speaking to him. That's when I thought they would go and like, he had to tour duty. He is that one time when I saved you. But they, they didn't do that at all. And I still, maybe just me, I do still think that, you know, he's not dead because we saw that little hmm. red drop in his eye. The little red dots. He's, he's, a, he's in him. You know, what if? So he's a zombie somewhere gonna be on the what if episode. Um, but after that, you know, this is when, when you know, we, he starts, he runs, you know, he after he leaves them, he sees a picture of the Captain America signs and he's just, oh. cause you know, it's supposed to be John Walker, Captain America. And he has that look of like, oh, they stole it from me. And he doesn't seem to be really happy. And that's when we kind of know that, you know, he's got something planning in his head that's basically we see later on when we finally get mid credits that he is, going to be his own version of a Captain America from Party City. If you know. From Party City. I mean, if you really look at it, it's some Party City. Yeah, you know, my man's uh, making that that old <laughs> Dollar Tree fucking That's a Dollar <laughs> Tree. You know, it's Dollar Tree from, you know, you've got your can of paint. You yeah, FYI something. shield, you know, cosplay Captain America <laughs> going on here. You know, my man's going to New York Comic Con right now, you know. <laughs> oh, so oh, Richard has Richard. joined us. Uh oh. Hello, Mr. Richard Bailey. Um, get your take really quickly. How did you think of the episode? I thought the episode was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. And let me <laughs> add that uh excellent build up to Sam finally taking the shield. Finally, I have someone on my side. Yeah, Richard. Oh, oh really? Richard, oh, they, oh, they yeah, didn't like me, it. Me, yeah, me and Chris were like kind of like, eh. And I was just yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> like this was well, the weakest episode really? of the season. Yeah. Well, well, well. Here's the thing. Uh, I understand that that argument as well. It, it's you know, you we we got the fight that I was anticipating, oh, even yes. though it was not a long fight. Um, yeah, that was very intense, very emotional. Mm -hmm. So it, it it feels like this episode obviously is setting up for the finale. Yeah. When all all hell breaks loose. Um, but I I do like. I do appreciate the fact that with Sam, <clears throat> you know, when I when I heard about this show, I figured from the first episode, okay, so he's I want to see how does he get to this thing where he's now Captain America. And he denies denies it the first time, and then he goes you goes he goes through all these things, and then you finally get to this episode, and now you understand why he took it up. But then you also understand why it's also a good thing he didn't take it in the beginning, because then we wouldn't have gotten John Walker in the first place. So, hmm. I understand uh, the build up to get to that, but uh, I, I understand what y'all are saying. It, it did. It wasn't as action packed the episode. It, it's it set sets up what's going to obviously happen in the next episode, which is the uh, all chaos uh, breaks loose. Yes. Um, but I will say one thing that I didn't like: the tease at the end where Sam <laughs> opens up the thing. Oh, what is he looking at? Obviously, it's his version of a Captain America outfit, right? So why do I have to wait until next week to see that? <laughs> <laughs> you got to grip you. You, you know, it's probably going to be that dope one with the wings, too, you know, because, he again, he's going to be his own version of Captain America. Like, he's going to be Falcon with the wings, right, and still have the shield. Yeah. It's going to be dope, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. But, yeah, no, Rich, just, just catch you up real quick. It's just Chris and I felt it was just a little bit slow in the middle. You know, the whole boat sequence is like, all right, bro, you know. Then, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, and the um, and then we literally just talked about this before he came. Uh, Chris and I also weren't we weren't very happy with the whole Isaiah thing because we wanted Falcon to push back. It's like, yes, we understand that you had things fucked up for you as Captain America, as a you know trying to be a black super soldier. But mm -hmm. 2021, I've saved the world. I've done through all this shit. The world is ready for a black Captain America. There's gonna be some fucking bullshit in, associated with it. But but it had to, it had to be his sister to tell him that. You know, like he didn't come back into it. She's like, no. This is you, motherfucker. You're Captain America. You know, he and then he's yeah. like, Oh, I'm gonna go train now because my sister told me, bro, you should have came back inclusion on your own, man. You know? So I, I think those are very fair uh, criticisms. 
the question that I have for the three of you, though, are you disappointed that uh, we didn't get any more of Nemo? There's no ulterior motive, and now this character is gone, I, I guess, until we see him uh, maybe in the next Black Panther or whenever we're going to see him again. Yeah. No, I don't have a problem with that. I thought it was fine because I, I know what they're doing. I know they're setting him up for something bigger. So okay. that was fine. You know, this not the end of his story. That dude is yeah. too crafty. You yeah. Know? So no, I was, I was fine with it. You know, take, uh, I did like that kind of fake out, you know, that Bucky did. Like, shoot, yeah. you motherfucker. Take, like, oh, taking fight. someone to the raft is the Marvel equivalent of taking someone to Arkham Asylum. Yeah. It's just a <laughs> so they don't have to worry about that. He'll yeah, be he'll back. be back. Yep. Yep. Dana, so, what about you? Um, me and, and see, I, I, I think that Zemo, for that moment, he served his purpose. For some reason, I kind of feel like, yes, he played the sugar daddy role, but he mm. also kind of played the nice little therapist role. Even though he's the one, the reason why Bucky ended up, you know, being yes. brainwashed. But mm. in the end, he ended up being his ally. So it's a weird relationship that everyone has to go through. That's just, you know, funky. But, you know, MCU has a way of turning their villains into heroes. And and so that's why I kind of think that in that realm, it, it works fine. But this is not the last that we see as Zemo. Just like it wasn't the last that we saw, what was it, Andy Serkis. He popped up all around until they killed him. Yeah, Claw, yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris? Oh. Okay. No, we, he went. Yeah. Okay. So just to real, so to really just to kind of catch you up, Richard, I was just wondering, what did you think of uh, Louis? What was it, Louis Dreyfus, uh, kind of cameo? She was Madame Hydra. Oh, I thought that was interesting. I was curious, are we going to see her in any other MCU movies moving forward? Ah, so you don't know. So she originally is in uh, Black Widow. Oh. The character is there, yeah. So you know that was basically to set up the whole what was it, Taskmaster? I think his name was, and mm -hmm. uh, Florence Plough. You know the sister. They still set up all of these characters who will kind of blend into Young Avengers again. And she was originally in that movie, but because of the whole COVID situation, and now they had to change the schedules, she ends up. We see her now. So she was supposed to be a nice surprise, but. We got a big surprise, to be, but if we would have seen everything in order, it would have been like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But instead it was like, oh. So she, you know, she came in kind of mysteriously, handed the card. She knew information that, you know, about John Walker that wasn't shared at all with the public, such about, you know, the shield is gone. We knew you took the serum, um, all these different things. So was there any thoughts that, what, or speculations of what she could bring with this new storyline coming in? Well, I, I, I believe uh, Tony said on this show previously, uh, we know where John Walker is headed. Mm -hmm. So my guess is when I saw her, this is someone that's going to play a role in that. I don't know if I'm uh, accurate in that making that guess. I know when we saw the mid credit scene that you were showing as I joined, uh, I was a little confused of why the color is still <laughs> uh, red, white, and, uh, and blue. Oh, um, it's a, it feels to me like it's a callback from when he was in, in the courtroom scene. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Because remember, I, I'm a Mary, you know, I fought for this country. I'm in this country. You made me. Look what you built. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but is, is, is he, he eventually is, uh, what is it, agent? Uh, yeah, U.S. agent. U.S. US agent. agent. Is U.S. agent has has black on, right? Yeah, he has black on. But remember, he in in this show at the moment, he still thinks of himself as Captain America. Remember, he said, "I am Captain America." Yeah, yeah, okay. I see. So I he see. Still, yeah, he still thinks of himself as Captain America at this point. So, so in other words, he, he gonna have a very unpleasant encounter with uh, yes. Bucky and uh, Sam next week yes. when they all try to stop uh, the Flag Smashers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so we had that, and also if you wanted to say anything about, um, I think that was it so far. I think you're all you're all caught up. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, and, you're and, you're all good. He's talking and, about the yeah. And, and and I know that Chris and and Tony did not like the uh, boat, the dancing yep. scene. You so y'all man, so y'all y'all don't support uh, Bucky trying to have a life with uh, Sam's sister. No, it's not that. It's just uh, I, 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 I'm just speaking for myself. I, that part, I don't, I don't mind. It's just that boat scene just dragged on. I'm like, what is the point of this? Like, it's not you, you about, have, it's not about the romance. No, uh, well, no. I mean, that's fine. Here's here's the thing. That 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 flirting could happen at, at any time. Any, yeah. yeah. 
it just slowed down the whole thing. It's like again, like it's just weird how we have this is the second to last episode, and it just went to a crawl instead of a gradual build up to you know to what's happening. So that's yeah. my only thing. It's like you had literally three episodes back to back of crazy ass action, and it's like it stop, like whoa. We should have maybe built up to this shit, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's the only problem. I don't mind the character development that happened within the boat sequence and, you know, him being at the little farm or whatever. That's fine. It's just the way it was done is what I take issue with, not what happened necessarily, you know? Yeah, and, and all the while, uh, they're giving you very little about what's happening with the bad guys. The scene where they had with, uh, where they met up with, uh, what's the Russian guy? The UFC fighter, really. Oh, yeah, GSP. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're saying Pierre, yeah. Yeah. Rock, Rock, yeah, yeah. So now you know that this guy yeah, is Rock, also yeah. helping them out now as well. So that that's that was the only development that I caught in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, well, he, he, was, he was in the first episode. Hey, yeah, look, he's wearing a fake shield right there. But, but you see who <laughs> oh, called him, right? You see who What's called that? him. Uh, mm -hmm. who, who, who said who arranged that? Sharon. Sharon. Sharon Carter. Yeah. The power oh, broker. Yeah. The power oh, broker. So that my my theory. Yeah. Uh, panned out. I mean, they don't. They don't come out and say it, but yeah. It's, it's... Yeah, they did a terrible job at that. And also, did you talk about Isaiah that scene, Richard? Yeah, Rich, what's your take, bro? What's your take? Oh, about him describing how he was basically uh, used as a lab rat, and then all mm -hmm. the stuff that he went through. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I felt that. Uh, that that uh, it, it adds more emotional weight to his story, and I definitely think that that also played a role in Sam making that decision. Uh maybe like you like y'all said the sister yeah she pushed him but I think that also a little bit because you see how this guy was treated and he doesn't want to talk up speak up about anything. Uh mm -hmm. so but yeah it's a rough story to to process. I was curious where his uh grandson his grandson is the patriot, right? Yeah, he's patriot. Yeah. He was right there. Okay, yeah, but uh, was he in this episode cuz I don't recall seeing yeah, him. He's right there. Yeah, he's okay, playing okay, basketball look. in the street before he goes in the house. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. So he hasn't uh, made the choice to become a hero yet, I guess. I think that once, here's the theory I have. I think that once Isaiah sees uh, Sam as Captain America mm -hmm. and sees what he can accomplish, he might then give Isaiah, not Isaiah, he might then give, um, what was his name? I can't remember his name, but the Patriot, the okay. I feel that because he's such a great actor and he has such a strong story, he mm -hmm. may end up training the Young Avengers. Maybe. Okay. I mean, he's also very bitter. So that's also another thing. It's like, no. That's possible. But I, in order for him to be the Patriot, I do feel that he has to get permission from his grandfather because they kind of show that they have a connection. Well, that's one thing we do know for sure is that when Sam actually does reveal the costume and, you know, has that image, it's going to make a lot of impact because you saw that in this episode when he was doing the training and he has his little nephews looking at seeing him using, you know, the shield mm -hmm. and they really looked at him a little bit differently. So, yeah, you see that coming because they tease it in this episode. But, yeah, that's a good theory. Maybe. <laughs> So then we get, um, there we have the GCR, the GRC scene, where basically they want to put out the PATH Act. And the PATH Act is, you know, 20 million refugees. They just move them back to their original country where they came from. Because during the whole blip, which I hate saying, everyone just got scattered about, you know, the open borders. I wish we could have gotten more scenes of that. Maybe Black Widow, no, Black Widow won't touch about that. But, um, I just wish that we would have gotten more of that because it ties into Carly and Cardi. I feel she is the weakest right now of villains only because her storyline is kind of one dimensional and we don't really get more information with that. But you know, the GRC, they want to bring all of the refugees back to their own country. And that's when, you know, we get that big scene that kind of is very similar to what was it? Civil war when mm -hmm. they killed T'Challa where basically everything, the screens go, you know, in and out, everything goes to black and it's assumed they're all dead. Yeah. So any, well, any I, 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 I want to yeah. ask who, who, who puts red lights in a, in a giant conference room? <laughs> <laughs> that's how, that's how you know that something's evil is happening. Oh no, the red lights turned on. It's not like the fire <laughs> alarm went off. It's like, Oh, evil's happening. 
the red <laughs> ominous lights came on. Happening. Oh man. Oh, by the way, I that the same center that was um telling John Walker off was also at that meeting too. Oh, you know he's gonna bite it. Like that oh, yeah, that yeah. was like I was like, Oh yeah, he's gonna bite it. That's it. He he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, that scene was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was framed cool, but yeah, it's like, why do they have red lights, bro? You know, so you're ready to have to set up. But I do want to go back to uh, the whole um, the yeah. little scene with John Walker in the court because that was really good. Like, mm -hmm. again, because you feel this dude's pain, right? Yeah. He served his country. He's done his thing. And they just tossed him out like he's garbage, you know? Like, granted, he fucked up, you know? And he, could, and he didn't really help his situation in the end. But it's like, you understand where he's coming from, you know? And this is why, another reason mm -hmm. why, like, this is, this is why this dude is my favorite character in the show because he's so conflicted, you know? And again, you, you want to see him do the right thing, but you know he's going to fuck it up. And you want to see how he's going to fuck it up. So that's the beautiful part, <laughs> you know? But I like that a lot. And then it's, you know, it obviously sets up everything to the end. But you notice he lied to the family, right? Like, oh, you, like, you, you avenged yep. the, the guy who killed uh, our, our son. Yeah. Like, yeah, you avenged him. He's like, no, you didn't. You didn't, you didn't kill. <laughs> no, you just her, murdered bro. some No, no. Yeah. You, ran, you murdered some random, you know? So that's kind of interesting how he's there trying to be supportive, yet lying to them at well, the same time. I think the, the sister time, could you know? tell. Yeah, like, yeah, I think she was. Mm -hmm. Shana said, he, he, she, she gave him the yeah, stink eye. She, she wasn't yeah. buying it. She wasn't buying it. Yeah, she was the she only was one. I, like, you saw her, she, she was like, Please, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the John Walker stuff again. I want to see what's going to happen because it's all going to converge together, right? You have John Walker in there. We're going to have this flag smashes. We're going to have GSP showing up. All this stuff is going to come to a head. And it's going to be really cool. But um, what's the other thing I want to say? Um, yeah, I, the whole thing with the with the um, with the we're saying GRC. Where the fuck? Um, GRC. GRC. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You like again. You understand where. The, the group is coming from the flag smashers like hey we've been in, you know in these other countries for all these years now they're trying to send us back home like on the one hand i understand where you're coming from but the same was like go home man like <laughs> go to you know what i'm saying like bro like the, the, we're going we're trying to go back to the way things were go the fuck back home you know so it, just personally i'm like uh, I, that's why i'm not on there so i'm like get the fuck out of here man. So we're uh -oh. back they're trying to get back to normal go, go home you know um but um and, and yeah, Carly, I, I agree with you, Dan. I don't like her very much. I've, I've voiced my um, well, hold I on. don't like her very much. I, you know, I was like, I'm always like, yeah, just kill her already, bro. So I'm looking forward to her meeting her end at the end, you know. Well, well hold on a second. Did did it Dana say last week that she likes that cal character on this yes, show? She yes, she did. Yes, she did. <laughs> I don't like her. I, I voiced my <laughs> <own. laughs> yeah. You know, but Dana did say you, yeah, but you like her, but she's one of the best. You know, what's up with that? <laughs> I've been consistent about this woman. I don't like her. I want her to die. <laughs> if I haven't been clear enough, you know. But yeah. Oh, and also this. this yeah, look, at home, girl, look at her face. Look at her face. She she's looking at John Walker. Like, you full of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You full of shit. I saw so that I too. Want, I'm like, yeah. that's okay. So I want to see what she's gonna do. You know, I want to see. Yeah, what she, yeah I would love like, that face alone yeah. needs to come back. Yeah, you know, you, think about it like this. I'm more interested in a side character than I am with this Carly girl. You know, little orphan Annie. You know, just saying. Okay, can I ask a, 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 a quick question? I don't know if y'all already mentioned this. Mm -hmm. So is this character dead or not? Because we also had a conversation last week. Y'all said, "Oh, he's still alive." Ooh. Oh, Dana was saying that. I don't no, know, bro. He's Look, oh, he it was the eyeball. And I will yeah. fight to this day, even if they show his body dead and there's a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> this man is not dead. He had, look, he woke up. Something was dripping into his eye. His eye, he rubbed it. It turned red, but it wasn't like the whole eye was red. It was that dot. Mm -hmm. And they paid, they stayed on the eyeball. He cannot be dead. I don't know. I think they've probably buried him by now, to be honest. He's, like, he's buried, family, but he's yeah. going to wake up like, yeah. so, so, so you're saying that this is going to be one of them scenes they show at the end of the of the finale. <laughs> His hair going to burst out of the ground. Like of the ground like I am zombie, willing like. to bet whatever it is that needs to be betted on, but he is not dead. <laughs> we'll you know, see. either the, the end scene, 20 movies from now, he will pop up. He's not dead. Yeah. yeah. I refuse to believe. So, um, yeah, basically, you guys were talking about, you know, there was the Party City episode where everyone was kind of like in agreement that it was just a hot mess. Any feeling about that? Anyone from the panel? Chris? Well, what you, well with 
Party City, you mean uh, John Walker forging the shield? And yeah, that that, that whole that whole uh, spray paint. And also, <laughs> yeah. really quickly, if anyone paid attention, if anyone noticed, when they did the scene, they started off with the sound of the hammer. That is exactly yeah. how they closed Avengers Endgame. What was supposed to be like an old that... to Tony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious what he's forging that out of because if it if it's ordinary steel, he yeah, he's screwed. Yeah. Well, you know, he showed the police badge. Like, remember, he had his badge and it was everything yeah. that that they gave him all of his metal. Yeah, it, it's metals. Like he melted down, but like metals are made out of gold and silver. Those aren't those aren't very strong metals. You know, you're going yeah, up not. against other super soldiers and guys with guns. You're probably not going to want to forge yeah. anything out of gold to protect you. Yeah, I, I, I just got to jump in there because I thought the same thing. I'm like, dude, if you're just making that out of regular ass metals, Bucky punches that thing once, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I want to see like, you know, what is it? What is he making that shit out of? And you know, the the Wakandans, if they made Sam's outfit, his wings are made out of vibranium. Exactly. So everybody's rocking vibranium except you. Now you just forge this you know? shit out of Home Depot metal. Like, yeah, fucking on, cosplay, <laughs> fucking shield. You know, that's what it looks like. Yeah, some looks homemade good. shit. No, it looks good. Don't get me wrong, but it's like that thing's not going to be durable, bro. Like yeah. the, the only person is good against is fucking the, the French guy, you know? Oh, oh, Captain America, that is a stupid shit. I would crush you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's trying. <laughs> Pat Bucky will slap that thing and dent it, you know? Ooh, shots fired. Oh, and also one thing that before uh, we forget, I wanted to just backtrack on. Remember, it was right after the fight when we saw Joaquin come in and he gave that conversation. And he was like, oh, no, here's the wings. Now you keep them. That right there, we're building up to another setup. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, well, that that was nice. It was a, a well-framed shot, another one, because he's holding the shield when he says that. He turns around and says, keep the wings, right? But he's mm -hmm. holding the shield. That's like symbolism. Like he's shedding the falcon mantle. And he's going to assume the Captain America one. But then he's going to have that costume. He's going to be both because it's going to have wings. Mm -hmm. and, and we all know in the comics that Torres ends up becoming the Falcon. Yes. Uh oh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's he right. does. Yes, he does. Falcon so, 2.0? Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of like a weird hybrid bird. And it involves the power broker, but you know, not to get things overly complicated. He just becomes the Falcon number two. So yeah, except I without, that. he's not like a freaky mutant in this show, you know. <laughs> no, no, and uh, you know, woman also, you know, basically what um, Louis, I cannot pronounce this woman's name, but the Seinfeld lady. Ju yeah, Julia Louise Dreyfus. Julia, that's her first name. Julia Louise Dreyfus is yes. basically Amanda Waller in this whole mm -hmm. situation yeah so that's also a fun little tidbit well is that going to lead into thunderbolts you think they're going to yeah. do the equivalent oh yeah, yeah. that is john walker in there you already yeah. know you already mm -hmm. know that's yeah. yeah aren't they like black ops too yeah it's like it's like suicide squad for marvel yeah yeah so yeah absolutely i believe that they'll do that i don't because i just can't see a lot of these characters going away that they've introduced yeah so, I agree. Uh, so, is there any final thoughts that you guys have about this? Yeah, no, I'm ready for the next episode. You know, like I said, this episode was slow, but it's necessary, I guess. In a way, it could have been done better, but <laughs> now we're going to get the real shit, you know, and, I, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the different storylines converging, right? The John Walker, um, you know, Sam, Bucky, all this shit just coming in, in together. Um, Sharon Carter. Uh, Batch Rock, it's gonna be really cool, and I'm hoping the episode's gonna be an hour because we're gonna need a lot of time with this. Like, you know, they can't just rush it out. We need we need time for this, and hope it's gonna be epic. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard, yeah, uh, I thought it was a great episode. I agree with what Tony said. The building blocks for what should be a excellent finale. Um, mm -hmm. I hope to see some surprises. Some unexpected, but I will not anticipate any cameos because you know what they what, we, what Marvel says about cameos. So I will not expect any surprise cameos next week, but uh, plenty of action. And while Tony it, it has said he's looking forward to the action, I'm looking forward to seeing John Walker lose it when he sees Sam now has the shield mm. in that new costume. 
Mm. <laughs> he can't win. He tries so hard, but he's always yeah. playing catch up in every scene. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So, what about you, Mr. Seely? Uh, yeah, I do look forward to it. I hope it's um, it, it's a long episode, like Tony said. Uh, they need to pack in a lot. Um, they also have a lot of character things to resolve. I, I don't know if they'll go back to Sharon Carter, but it's like, all right, you set up Power Broker, but you have to do something with this now. You can't just have her make a phone call and go, hi, I knew you were evil, and then leave it at that. Like, <laughs> she had like Things have to be resolved with her. Yeah, you have to have the fight between Falcon and um, Batrock. Batrock. Um, but also, I guess Bucky needs to come back because John Walker needs to beat up somebody besides the Flag Smashers, yes. right? <laughs> like it, so there has to be all this fighting. There has to be an hour of punching, so I expect yes. that. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, you heard it here first. So Dana confirmed that uh, Lamar Jackson's going to burst out of the ground like a zombie at the end of this yes. episode. So that's going to be the post credit <laughs> scene. <laughs> that, that's going to set up Marvel Zombies, the movie. Yes, yeah, you know you hear <laughs> thriller. You know there is. You do laugh, but there's a there's a zombie version that ends up in What If? And remember, we're getting a What If episode. Oh uh, yeah. Series. Interesting. You guys that's after laugh. that's after this, right? Yeah, no. Um, no, Lo Lo Loki is next. That's yeah. that's Loki is is yeah, yeah, technically Loki. next. Yeah, maybe he's a, he's an internal. So you know, internal as that. Hmm. I yeah, he's not dead. I refuse. Hmm. Mm -mm. So yeah, that was that was I. Overall, oh, anything else, Chris? Um, let's see. This I don't think we'll see Zemo again. No, I think Aww. they just have to wrap up the loose ends. Like, uh, Power Broker has to be resolved. Um, mm. John Walker has to be either put down by Falcon. Batrock is easy. Like, he should just beat him up, and then the big fight will be the three-way between him, uh, between Sam Wilson, John Walker, and Carly. And he, obviously, he, he has a lot of enemies to fight. Bucky needs to come back. He's probably already in New York because... He, he caught a plane to somewhere. I assume he went back to New York because that's where he lives. Uh, well, yeah, after that whole thing, I have that one guy. Remember, you know, that one yeah, guy. Yeah, the too. guy in Chinatown. So I assume he's he's living there. Um, You know, and uh, yeah, I don't. And it would be nice if there was a cameo, but I don't think there will be any cameos. <laughs> I legit think the cameo was Ju Julie Louise Dreyfus. I think that was I a think cameo. That was yeah, it. that was yeah. that was the cameo. I was generally confused till she said her name. I was like, who the hell are yeah. you supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> like Elaine walks in here. Like, yeah, Elaine. That's what I thought what, Elaine. Who are these people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who are these people? <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it'd be good. I think they have to make it like an hour and a half though. Oh. <laughs> to wrap it up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, they they doubled um the length of WandaVision. Didn't they come finally? Yeah. The thing is, WandaVision was already short. You know, like there were there were thirty minute episodes. Like Falcon was like always like longer episodes mm -hmm. from the true. jump. True, true, true. So yeah, I again, like I said, we're getting zombie uh, Lamar. <laughs> that i know we're getting um they have to figure out what to do with carly i hope that they just i hate to say that because i loved her storyline but they, i'm cool with them just killing her yeah she needs to die okay. you know or girl, yeah can i ask one one question for y'all this mm -hmm. is my yes. final question all right so in terms of a cliffhanger finish do you think it's safe to say for season two we're probably going to get uh uh <clears throat> what is uh U.S. agents team versus Sam and uh, Bucky. Or Thunderbolts versus Avengers, or you know, I don't know. That'd be well, interesting. You, you, you said they're they're called the Dark Avengers, right? Or whatever. I don't know it what the team be, is. Yeah, it, it yeah. could be a it could be Dark Avengers. It could be Thunderbolts. You know, something. You know, yeah. we don't know what they're gonna do here. We to be honest. Okay. But I don't I don't want to jump the gun on that right now. To be honest. Uh, no, but they I, announced Thunderbolts, so it's not jumping the gun. Yeah, I haven't seen that shit, so to me, it's <laughs> <been>. <laughs> um, I, I just want to, I just want to say, we should also try to guess what the post credit scene is going to be. Oh. oh, next week. Yeah, for next week. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> see, I don't know because if you go by the original, how it's supposed to lead out, wasn't it supposed to be Wandavision that would connect this it was, to? This that? was supposed to come after, come before. Yeah, this was. This was yeah, before. so probably. I don't 
don't know. But I don't see how any of this I don't think they're going to tie it. I don't think they're going to tie it. I don't think they're going to tie it. Then it would just follow maybe Thunderbolts. Yeah, maybe. could be. Who knows? Yeah, that's so, I, don't, I don't I don't feel comfortable sick of I don't have enough information right now. Yeah, no, I'm just saying guess. I, I'm guessing that uh uh Elaine is gonna uh John Walker is gonna be in a straight jacket or he's gonna be in a jail somewhere and she's going to open the door and bring some soldiers and they're gonna unlock him and she's gonna drop the US agent shield in front yeah. of him and the costume. Oh. Yeah, 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 I can see that. that that's, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. If we're talking about what do we think how the show is going to end, yeah, that's going to happen. John Walker's going to get defeated. Falcon's going to become the new Captain America. Bucky's going to accept his new life. You know, the Flag Smasher's going to be destroyed. And Sean Carter is going to keep doing her thing as a power broker. You know, I think that's what, and then obviously, Madam Hydra is going to keep doing her machinations and all that. So I, that's how I think, you know, all, that, all those things are going to be resolved. And Torres yeah. gets, he fixes the wings and becomes Falcon. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it'll be very interesting, as Richard would say. Interesting, you know? controversial, yeah. but it's interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no man, good stuff. Was that everyone? Yeah, I think so. We're, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, is there any last thoughts? Anything you guys want to plug, Mr. Polanco? I know you have tons of things you do. Yes. All right. So. Check me out on the Twitter so you can see it right there. That's my Twitter at Ramu Death. I don't need to spell for you. It's literally right there. You know, um, actually, you know, people people listen to this shit too, I guess. Uh, R O M U D T H in my bio. There's going to be links to all the things I do PC mag, laptop mag, and throwdown show where Chris and I tell you everything about gaming every Thursday and Sunday night at 10 30 p.m. Eastern. And I also want to plug the Invincible podcast that I do with Dana and Carlos. That'll be up. Uh, this weekend on Sunday, and I believe we'll probably get those to you a little earlier after Falcon is over, because uh, now we won't have to overlap, you know. Uh, not Saturday, because I won't be around on Saturday. No, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, Invisible, that'll, yeah, that, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll probably start doing Invisible on Fridays after Falcon is done, you know, because those are that's coming to an end. So go check that out, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the final episode. Should be good. Uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. Richard? Oh yeah, um, plenty more uh, content coming. A lot of shows. I have a couple of things that I am reviewing. Uh, I guess I can't talk about some of this stuff. So uh, mm. yeah, just know that there's some uh, many things coming. And of course, always happy to be on this show. Appreciate everybody's continued support. And uh, stay tuned. We have a lot of exciting things in the works. See you later. Yeah, so you can catch us every Thursday and Sunday on Throwdown. So I do my thing. I'm I'm a I'm a simple humble man, so I don't do much else but but work and take care of my kids. So yeah, that's it for me. Yeah. By the way, listen to the latest episode of Throwdown where Chris once again has to explain to people why a Western company will not buy a Japanese company. You have to do this every single time these rumors fly around. <laughs> Square, <laughs> Square Enix. Yeah. By the way, Square that got debunked. That got debunked, you know. So um, yeah, but it's like Chris had to explain, like, because we're like, oh, Microsoft's gonna buy Square Enix. Chris had to explain again, no. again, why that's not gonna happen. But yeah, go go check us out on Throwdown. It's good stuff. Throwdown show, we're everywhere, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Literally any podcast app on earth, we're on it. You know, mm -hmm. it's crazy. So go check us out. And once again, I am Dana. Um, we are to have interviews coming up. We have the cast of Without Mercy. We have Mark Lee Jordan. We have uh, Laura London. That is actually a premiere on uh, it, Thursday. Uh, this next upcoming Thursday, that'll be premiering at three o'clock. Uh, we have um, other shows as well. We have the upcoming Loki. We have Black, uh, what is it, Black Widow that I got approved for. So we have all of the Marvel shows basically covered. So just stay tuned for that. We have Without More that's coming up next week, along with the press conference for that. Um, we have a whole bunch of other slew of shows that'll, you know, interviews that'll pop up daily. Uh, between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. So you can check out on the same channel here, thecoalition.com. Uh, and that's basically it. It's doing a lot of interviews and seeing a lot of movies and TV shows. Also, we will have an upcoming um, talk, of a podcast about Mortal Kombat. That was amazing. Uh, saw that movie, also saw In the Heights. We won't have a podcast about that, but that was really great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
yeah, just stay tuned for, for more content over at thecoalition.com. It's Coalition with a K. So I have been your host. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, thank you, Richard. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Chris. Everyone for taking time out. Have a great day, afternoon, evening, and just enjoy. Bye, guys. Bye, Falcon.